Welcome back to the Two Black Runners podcast presented by The Running Report. And this week we have something like totally different. Now we still have our podcast that's been released on all streaming platforms from uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher or Google, wherever you listen to podcasts, you'll be able to find the Two Black Runners podcast but we're gonna release this podcast in parts here on YouTube because we had five individual interviews on Sunday that we did on our IG Live. It was a big like black running community conference and just had some of the top elite athletes from now and in the past come on and just talk about the social injustice, systemic racism, and everything that's been going around right now with the death of George Floyd and Mount Aubrey and everything like that. It was really just great conversation, things that they want to see happen in the future, how race has affected their life and how it has affected them in their running. It's a, it's a great listen and we're going to start it off with Corey Carter, then the next day we're going to have Michael Granville, then Raven Rogers, Will Clay, and then lastly on Saturday we're going to end it off with Joseph Gray. This is some really great interviews, hope you guys listen to every single one of them, and this is just our efforts in to keeping the conversation going we all know that usually it lasts for two weeks it's like a black spirit week spirit weeks for a couple weeks but here on the runner report we want to keep the conversation going and we're doing it the best way that we can by bringing bringing you to the issue and we're bringing you right to the black perspective and in the track community and this is all hosted by aaron potts my brother the other black runner and two black runners and he did his thing bro on ig live so aaron take it away with our first guest or our second guest or third guest i think i'm gonna reuse this aaron just just take it away am i good you good you good, good. You good. Uh, what if i go on and my stuff is messed up <laughs> If your stuff was messed up when we went on, I'd be like, dang, like, they trying to stop us for real. They knew. They knew. True, true, true. How are you doing, though, out there? I'm good. I don't have, um, you know, my running report merch yet, so I'm rocking my Elevate. Hey, shout out to Will. Shout out to Will Clay. <laughs> but I'm good. It's Kobe's birthday, so I'm, I'm doing good today. Yeah, if you guys don't know, that is her dog. It has its own Instagram. Can you shout out the Instagram for everybody real quick? It's the Kobu Monster. You know, we got matching handles. Um, but yeah, he turned six today. We're very ha happy. But Damn. that's what we're for. <laughs> Damn. Great mom. Great mom here. We try. We try. But let's just get into it. It's like, how are you feeling this entire week? How has your mind been? Where have you been at? Um... I don't know it's kind of it's it's crazy but it's also kind of normal in that like we deal with this all the time so yeah it's 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 a weird time with the coronavirus and I think like this has created a perfect storm because people aren't working so they just can go out and protest and people are frustrated and I think things are finally coming to a head and boiling over and it's kind of beautiful to see that like People are standing up and they're speaking out and they're fighting for what's right. So, yeah. How is this like, has it affected your training or how has it affected like your day-to-day -day life? Um, it's so funny because like we'll be at practice like twice. Two white men have come up to Coach Flo to apologize for racism in general. Like don't know him at all. Um, and I was like, oh, like people are shook. Um, I think as black people, we, I I feel like we have a lot of practice in compartmentalizing things. Yeah. So I'm able to go to the track and do my work, but then I find myself like, I'm not sleeping as much because I feel like my like morning routine, nightly routine is like get on Twitter and watch these videos. Um, and I don't know if that's good for my mental health or bad. She is sleep deprived, but I don't know. It's just, I just feel like the need to be informed and also just like, don't want like i don't know how to put it it's like i don't want all, all of this to go on without a way does that make sense so. no i feel you i've been the same like i i mean i was struggling with sleep like two or three nights in a row i've been a yeah. couple protests and like this this one has like affected me like more than the others and i'm like starting to i realized that yeah like a lot of stuff that just happens to me in general in life, I just kind of like compartmentalized it and pushed it down. And I was thinking like, I mean, I'm 25, 
like we're, we're somewhat around the same age and I, we're kind of from the same area too yeah and i remember like the the first one like that really like got me super shook bad was when like trayvon martin because trayvon martin was 17 that was 2012 yeah. i was 17 and yeah. then uh, ahmed aubrey just happened he's 25 brianna taylor she's 26 yeah and i feel like that's a part of the reason why like everyone is like over it because like like the young people you're seeing out there yeah brianna taylor and i she was it had been 27 i just turned 28 like our birthdays are the same week and like it's just so close home because she's sitting in her home not doing anything you know and it's just like it could be me it could be you but it, it doesn't like it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be like oh it could have been my mom it could have been my brother like it's a human they're human beings in general like mm -hmm. value human regardless of whether you can make that connection to them or not you know also i was thinking like growing up in claremont claremont a, is a pretty like wide area my brother lives in laverne right now and he was saying they went his roommates went to a protest just the other day and it was very like the police were very intense and yeah it wasn't looking good how was it like growing up in that area you know like it was it wasn't bad like claremont is a very sheltered place um like one of my best friend called me because she just was like i don't understand what's going on like because we didn't grow up like that with you know a lot of racial tension and like the most you're gonna get are like microaggressions um but that even though i was raised in a predominantly white area like my parents raised me to know like hey like this is the reality of the world that we actually live in like don't get it confused you're in a bubble and my parents worked hard to put me in that bubble um to give me opportunities but they didn't shield me from the realities of, like what life was going to be like with the skin that i have did you feel like when, when was the first time you like had like that discussion about race or can you is there a time you can recall or is it something you just you've always had with your family it's kind of like an ongoing thing um and it was like we had talks about the police and it was kind of just something that reoccurred i, I can't my dad sent me down on this day um yeah but it was that talk we had um the excellence talk it was hey in order to be successful in a world that's not going to have a lot of opportunities for you, you have to be twice as good as your white counterparts. Like you can't make stupid mistakes. Like I was raised in a household where excellence was a standard because that's what you have to be in order to be successful. Um, and like having conversations with the, with about, you know, how you interact with police and how people are going to judge you. It's, it's kind of sad that parents have to kind of, had this dilemma like do i rob my child of their innocence and, and let them know what the realities of the world is at a very young age and, and expose them to the injustices that you know that that just because they're they have this skin color like the world's not a fair place or do i risk them getting in situations where they don't understand what the rules of the game that we're playing is and they might not make it out so it's like do i give up their innocence or do i risk them not surviving um, because they don't know, like, the game's stacked up against them. Um, yep. So I think Black parents have to constantly have these conversations. Uh, I'm also, like, really happy, like, my mom, especially, she'd be like, okay, you like baseball? Like, you're playing baseball? We're about to learn about the Negro baseball leagues. You know, you like this yeah. about a Black girl. She constantly was finding Black role models for me and my brother and my sisters so that we could see ourselves excelling in whatever field um we wanted to go into and i think that as black people we're not taught our history and we don't know where we came from and we don't know we have all these amazing people because we're not in the history books um and i also think that's why there's a lot of ignorance around the black lives matter movement and people are so confused and they don't understand what's going on because you know the schools don't teach our troubling past like this country was built on the blocks backs of black people on on stolen land and yeah. they the we don't have conversations like that and so people are confused when black people are enraged and it's like we've been this has been happening forever for generations so like when it comes to these killings like it's shocking to watch um with these videos you know because it's but it's not shocking to hear about it's like okay here we go again like every year we have to learn a new name every year dealing with some sort of injustice um 
it just finally it's not on deaf ears and people are listening because you have no other option because you're at home all day. But I think like people have, I think people have been sheltered from the reality of what actually it is to be black in America. Yeah, and I find that very interesting. Me and Josh were talking about it. Like, I think a big thing is that black pe as black people, we have to talk about race so much in our homes. And me and Joshua were just like, bro, we feel like something about race gets brought up. I mean, every every dinner, like whether it's yeah. like something that's against us or like how we can like improve our community because there's so much against us. And I feel like um, where how you were saying like people don't know about the school and land and stuff, and I feel like it happens in the home. I don't feel like the white the, the white people have that conversation around race they kind of leave it to the school system yeah because they yeah exactly because they don't have to they have like i'm black 24 7 you know so my parents have to prepare me and explain to me my history and and it's relevant to me you know so they can't just you know have dinner and not talk about these things because it's not going to touch them. um but yeah but i i think it's been really cool like normally we do have these type of conversations within our community and I feel yeah. like over the weeks I've been having more conversations with my non-black friends my white friends and luckily like all of my friends are writers I have some good, some good people some allies that I am friends with I haven't had to cut nobody off yet yeah but I will be <laughs> very clear um yeah, so it's like, I've been so happy that I see my friends on social media and they're speaking out and they're using their privilege to uplift black people. And like, I haven't like, I don't have no all life matter friends. So <laughs> we're good. Ooh, right yeah, because yeah, that's a tough one. That's a, that's a, that's a tough little it's conversation. Not tough, like, we can cut it off real quick. Like, oh, you're I, not saying it's going to be tough for them. Like, <laughs> they don't get, they don't get roasted. But, um, I, well, it's just like, my thing is like, if you can't see the Black Lives Matters, like you can't tell me that my life matters and like you can't call yourself my actual friend. And like, I think sometimes people like to box people like that they're close with like, well, you're not like them. It's like, I'm exactly like them. You know, you can't, you can't separate me from. Yeah. That's interesting you say that um, because me and Joshua growing up in a, like a very diverse area, kind of like you were a lot of white people and stuff. And we're being being distance runners. We we hung around a lot yeah. of white people all the time, and we always get that we always get that white person that's like, "Hey, man, Aaron, you're not like the other black friend people, but you know, like you're different." Those other black people, do you actually interact with them? You're not like the the preconceived notion that they have of black people. But if exactly. you actually know black people on a one on one basis, you would see like there is no such thing as other black people. We're, we're a diverse, complex people. We're not all the same. So, like, to me, it's like, it's that's just such an ignorant statement. It is. It's a. It's a. It's an insult. Yeah. Um, and before you before you go too, how does it feel to be working for Jordan? You guys just committed to donating a hundred million um, to the movement for over the next ten years. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's great. Like, I feel like I've been so just like over all these kind of on like making their you know auditory social media posts where we support the black community but it's like okay like well where's where's the coins like put yeah. your mouth is but even more so like jordan is a company started by a black man our ceo and our president is a black man our vice president is a black man i've been able to interact with our executives and our leadership who are black people and i think that goes so much more than money like we appreciate the money and I, I appreciate that they're committed for the next decade. Like it's like yeah. throwing money at the problem right now. It's off the back. It shows that like they are dedicated to this problem for the long haul. Um, but I think that that money isn't sustainable. Like have jobs are. So having seeing that they're, you know, not only having black executives, but they sponsor so many black athletes, myself included. When you see their, you know, marketing, they're using black models with black artists and so they're putting black people in those rooms and also giving black people power so that so when they are in those rooms they don't feel like they can't speak their voice and opinion and i feel like that's why i'm like the Kendall Jenner the commercial situation with jordan mm -hmm. you're 
culture, like our creative culture has things black voices are uplifting them. And so for me, it's great that they are just uplifting our community and like giving people jobs because like that I feel like giving people a way to, you know, make money for themselves is actually what's going to uplift and, and elevate our community. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I can see that um Jordan Brand is actually doing the work and it's not just um oh we support the the cause black black lives matter and we stand with you but like I'm all about where is the action and so I appreciate that the brand is actually like putting the money in but also giving jobs and voices to black people so yeah and it's definitely cool to be someone to say that you're you're a part of it as well yeah. like that's awesome but I feel like Dude, this that was a fire. That was fire. All of that was fire. Um, I try. I, try. <laughs> I think we went a little over the time plan, but that was. I know I can talk. No, nah, that was that was that was so smooth. Joe, we're gonna try Joe next. We're gonna try Joe again. Hopefully this works this time. If not, we're gonna go. We're gonna go Michael Granville. But Corey, really appreciate you coming on. Uh, happy belated, and then uh, also happy birthday to to Kobe. And I also just wanted to say thank you for having me, and thank you for like creating a platform for us to come on and express ourselves. Like I think your podcast is dope, and I'm just really excited that you're doing this and like creating a space for us to like express ourselves, talk about issues. For sure, because it needs to be done. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's like Aja says, necessary. <laughs> Very necessary, bro. Hey, and we got we got a podcast with with Corey coming out soon, so. Wait on it. Wait on it. <laughs> All, right, All right. Bye. Bye.